Okay, today we're going to show you how to adjust easy adjust style clutches without having to take the tractor all the way apart. There's a lot of people say that you have to take the coolers off in the hood and sometimes the muffler and etc. But it can be done without it with the right tools. This is to adjust it, obviously not to rebuild it. To rebuild it, you have to pull everything off. Also, adjusting the clutch is not a long-term fix for your bad bearings. So if you got bad bearings in there, they're going to have to get replaced in order to get a good adjustment and a true adjustment. But it'll get you through for a little while. So here's the gap in here. Hopefully you can see this behind this fiber disc right here. There's a gap in here. It's way too big. That's only supposed to be between, I think it's four and seven thousandths or, or roughly in there. Um, but basically as long as it's not touching when the clutch is off is, is really what you're looking for. That's a huge gap in there. You're talking an eighth of an inch. You can see that play back and forth. So that could be a combination of worn shims and spring washers in here out of adjustment the bearings bad this clutch disc could be wearing um, but there actually looks like a fair amount of life on here as long as it's not glazed over so when you adjust this you make sure you cycle your pto handle a couple of times and then you can see how this operates it comes in and grabs and there's that's where your friction is so make sure this is all the way back when you go to adjust this now and I'll show you what we're going to use. So, to do it by the book, if you want a set of feeler gauges, you can use smaller ones. If you got these, these ones work good for what you're doing. They, we want two of them, so 180 degrees apart. So that's why we've got these two out here. And then you can pick your poison for the big nut. It's an inch and three quarters. Service wrenches work real good. Regular big wrench will work. And uh, angle wrenches really work real well. And the other key to being able to do this is to have a long flex head ratcheting wrench. This is this is the key to this this deal right here. So if you can see in here, this is your big nut here is your adjusting nut. There's a nut in the front of this fan that you can't see. Is that is your your tightening hex nut? But this here is your adjusting nut, and you want to spin this clockwise if you're facing the front of the tractor to tighten up this gap here which is way too much so that's where you need your inch and three quarter wrench the three quarter inch wrench is for the front hex nut that that locks all this in at the end of the deal so now we want to tighten this gap right up back here to the point where we get the feeler gauges in there okay so you take your long flex head wrench and send it up through behind the tie rod and in front of the axle i don't know if you can see that in there but get that on the three quarter bolt that's in the front of your fan Make sure it's turning the right direction so you can tighten this nut. You may have to have a helper or someone to hold this three-quarter wrench. Sometimes it'll it'll hold itself on there. And you can use this to position the big nut too. So when you put this wrench on here, don't cut yourself in the fan. You kind of sometimes got to hold it on there, the little wrench. But you'll see I'm turning the little wrench now and it's turning the crank. As it moves this wrench down, it gives me the gap I need in here to turn this. So again, I'm moving the ratchet wrench. See, it's moving the crank. And then I can do that. Now this gap back here is pretty tight now. I'm gonna pull this off here, make sure it's not interfering. I'm gonna cycle the PTO a couple of times. Now you can hear it, it's got a couple distinct clicks where it didn't have that before. You got one, two, one, two. Now it's all the way off. We'll have to check our gap and we'll see where we're at. Yeah, see, now that I cycled it, it still needs to get tightened up quite a bit. That's why it's real important you cycle it. Usually, what we find is if you tighten this big nut to the point where it's in contact with the the clutch disc on the piece on the fly on the flywheel of the plate, you're pretty close at that point. Again, just use the front wrench to position it. Your wrench will pop off the front sometimes, and it's just part of the game. Now it's getting close to that gap closing right up. This one was out quite a bit. I think someone tried adjusting it and didn't know what they were doing. Now it's just about touching that friction disc in the back, if you can see that. This gap back here is much closer than what it was. Stick a feeler gauge in there and that's where your gap is 
So right now this is an eight. We go a little bigger than what the book specs because when you tighten that front nut, it always seems to tighten up a little bit more. But this still slides in pretty handy. So we're gonna go a little bit more on the big nut here. So at this point we'll cycle it again. Let's see if we get the gap to open back up or if it stays pretty good. So the handle's going a little bit harder. It might be a little tight right now. I'll have to check it with the feeler gauges. You got the distinct clicks. There's one, two. Handle's all the way back. So it looks pretty good right now. We'll stick the feeler gauges in them. I guess most of the time we just kind of do this by eye, but here's your gap back here. The eight goes in, it's dragging a little bit. It's probably pretty close to being good. You want to do the same thing and put the other feeler gauge on the other side. So they're 180 degrees apart. So I'm going to hold this one here. I'm going to stick the other one in there. On the other side, this side quite a bit tighter chances are the bearings are a little worn the clutch disc can be a little worn a little crooked I'm gonna spin this pulley around yeah now I got mine in there now with that other one in the other side this side drags a little bit it's probably pretty close I would say it's good enough I'm gonna take the filler gauges out okay so now what we're gonna do is gonna tighten this front hex nut up there's a three quarter inch long ratchet and wrench is on so we got to take it off and flip it over so it's ratcheting in the right direction in order to tighten it up here you hold the big wrench and then you tighten the ratcheting wrench up and this can be a little tricky because you put more force on the ratcheting wrench now all right so now we're holding the big wrench and we're tightening the front one up supposed to be 45 foot pounds obviously you can torque it like this if you know what 45 foot pounds feels like or close to it you're good it's not the end of the world if you get close in the range this one we took up quite a bit of slack so it needs to get tightened up quite a bit again we're going to cycle it and feel how the handle feels the handle should be stiff but still fluid and not fight completely might be a hair, a hair tight so you can see the gap tightened up a little bit as we as we tightened it you have those distinct clicks but the handle feels a little too tight to me so the handle is now in the off position and at this point all we got to do is just back that big nut off a little bit so just back this nut off a little bit while you're holding this front front nut tight That's why we don't always go with the feeler gauges, but it's a good starting point. That's what the book says, but we go by feel so you're not bending linkage and, and forks on the uh, PTO. Okay, so now we got it adjusted satisfactory here. So remember, this is a, a, a worn clutch. The bearings and the springs are worn a little bit. The fork and everything here is probably worn a little bit. But this is how you're going to get yourself to the end of the season or finish your driveway blowing snow or, or whatever you do. This is not a substitute for rebuilding a worn clutch. So we wanted to show you that. Also, a little bit of lubrication in these points here down below. I don't know if you can see that where the rod linkage goes into that shift fork. A little bit of lubrication in there makes a huge difference and again you can use the feeler gauges as a good baseline but so when the engine's off the pto is disengaged this should spin freely and not ride on the engine but this clutch disc is worn a little crooked so there's one high spot in it which if the clutch is adjusted right and everything's in good shape it would kind of wear itself in so that's that we're going to actuate it now so you can kind of see it's a lot smoother but you still have your distinctive clicks 
and it's firm, it's really smooth, it doesn't completely bite you, it just takes a little bit of effort. The other way to tell if your clutch is too tight is if you're turning your tractor on and the PTO is disengaged and your belt's still spinning your snowblower or, or mower deck. So then you'd have to back it off a little bit more. So just a quick recap, loosen the front tiny hex nut, three quarter inch nut that's in front of the fan. Get your long ratchet wrench on there. Adjust with that big nut up there. Tighten it to close the gap back here. Loosen it to open the gap back here. Once you get this gap where you want it, cycle the handle a few times. You may need to go readjust. Once you're satisfied, hold the big nut. Tighten the front nut, it's supposed to be 45 pounds. Obviously you can't put a torque wrench on it the way it's set up with the cooler now. And start your tractor up. As long as the belt's not spinning right off the bat when your PTO's off and then the gauge is good, you should be good. If you feel the clutch slipping when you go into heavy grass or a lot of snow, just tighten this nut up again and, and tighten this clearance up. If that doesn't do it, then it's time for a new PTO clutch rebuild. Thanks for watching.